Shalom. Call the Lord, Yehovah, by Hashem, Yehovah Shai, by Hashem, Rekaku Dash, Devil on the City Apostles, that was a great millstone. I'm doing this video because, uh, you know, we got that so-called pagan holiday uh, Easter coming up. It's supposed to be the Easter weekend, and just want to uh, play, first of all, I want to play this little video going into the uh, the the origin of Easter traditions and the origin of the holiday and also showing you that Easter has absolutely nothing to do with the Bible, has nothing to do with the scriptures, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is not with Easter. So uh, I'm going to play this video for you real quick. Easter is a festival and holiday celebrated by millions of people around the world who honor the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, described in the New Testament as having occurred three days after his crucifixion. It's also the day that children excitedly wait for the Easter Bunny to arrive and deliver treats of chocolate eggs. But how can both of these very different things represent Easter? Ancient history has the answers, and it begins with a journey into the underworld. This is Ancient Origins, and today we'll be examining the surprising ancient roots of the Easter celebration. Subscribe for more fascinating historical videos like this one. How can Jesus' death and an egg-delivering rabbit go hand in hand? One theory is that the Easter story of crucifixion and resurrection is symbolic of rebirth and renewal, and it retells the cycle of the seasons and the death and return of the sun. According to some scholars, the Easter story comes from the Sumerian legend of Tammuz and his wife Ishtar, an epic myth called the Descent of Inanna, found inscribed in cuneiform clay tablets dating back to 2100 BC. When Tammuz dies, Inanna is grief-stricken and follows him to the underworld. She passes through seven gates where she is judged, killed, and then hung on display. In her absence, the earth loses its fertility, crops cease to grow, and animals stop reproducing. Unless something is done, all life on Earth will end. After Inanna has been missing for three days, her assistant goes to the other gods for help. The gods resurrect Tammuz and Inanna, giving them the power to return to the Earth as the light of the sun, giving the ancients the cycles of winter death and spring life. This is just one of a number of accounts of dying and rising gods that represent the cycle of the seasons and the stars. This legend parallels the resurrection of Jesus with the Christian belief that God raised Jesus from the dead after his crucifixion. After his death, his body was hastily placed in a tomb and sealed up with a large, heavy stone. Mary Magdalene and several other women returned to the tomb two days later to prepare Jesus' body with spices and ointments according to Jewish custom. When they arrived, they found the large stone had been pushed aside. The tomb was open and his body was gone. Jesus thus resurrected, appeared to them, and it's believed his resurrection was the beginning of Christianity, and this story is now observed around the world. But where does the Easter Bunny come into this? It could have been that Easter was originally a celebration of Esther, or Ostara, goddess of spring. One of the most revered aspects of Ostara is the spirit of renewal. Celebrated at spring equinox on March 21st, Ostara marks the day when light is equal to darkness and will continue to grow. As the bringer of light after a long dark winter, the goddess was often depicted with the hare, an animal that represents the arrival of spring as well as the fertility of the season. This imagery is seen across belief systems. In Germanic pagan myth, there is a legend that the goddess healed a wounded bird by transforming it into a rabbit. Still a bird in nature, however, the rabbit would show its undying gratitude by laying eggs as gifts. Thus, the origin of the Ostera rabbit, or Easter bunny, was born. In Christian art, white rabbits and hares are often used to symbolize fertility, virginity, and innocence, particularly regarding Mary and the virgin birth. This is a surprising connection, considering the rabbit's association with rampant sexual escapades, hence the expression, breeding like rabbits. But it turns out that due to their biology, hares have the almost miraculous ability to become pregnant with a second litter of babies while still pregnant with the first. The egg is an almost universal symbol of new life. To the ancient Egyptians, the egg symbolized the sun and shining light, while for the Mesopotamians, the egg represented the birth of Ishtar. 
the ancient Persians had also the custom of coloring and eating eggs during their spring festival. For the early Christians, the egg was a fitting symbol of Jesus' resurrection, a container full of life which stands empty when cracked open, like his tomb. People now enjoy chocolate as delivered by a mysterious rabbit over Easter. This is a more modern tradition which is said to come from German immigrants to the United States. By the end of the 19th century, shops were selling rabbit-shaped candies at Easter, which later became the chocolate bunnies we have today. And children were being told the story of a rabbit that delivers baskets of eggs, chocolate, and other treats. Easter truly means something to everyone, as a time to observe old traditions, celebrate the rebirth of sunshine and the springtime, and to remember that life can triumph over death. For more intriguing historical articles, follow the link below to our Ancient Origins website. Subscribe for more fascinating historical videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching. All right, that's it on that. Uh, as you can see, these these ancient origins and traditions and of uh, <laughs> of these pagan customs and these other guys, it's silly as hell. You know, <laughs> it makes no sense. But uh. But to try to equate that and, and put it with the Bible or with the scriptures is, is crazy. And, of course, the Christian church goes along with it, you know, saying that uh, Easter is about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. which has absolutely nothing to do with, with uh, Yahweh B'Hashim Yahweh Shai. Now, yeah, yeah, it probably does have something to do with Jesus Christ, you know. But not not the most not the God of the Bible, the Most High Power Yahweh was Yahweh Shai. So uh, one thing I want to do is, you know, uh, just see if, if the word Easter, you know, they celebrate, they celebrate it every year. So let's even see if the word Easter is even in the Bible. So we're just going to do a little search for that word. And it's only mentioned in here one time. Acts, the 12th chapter, chapter four. And uh, I'm going to start at verse one. It says, now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days, oh, check this out, in parentheses, then were the days of unleavened bread. Now, if you know anything about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that was during the time of the Passover. And I'm going to get that too in Exodus chapter 12. Uh, but verse verse four, it says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So let's see what that let's uh you know go to the concord and see what that word Easter is there. Uh, it's Greek word pascha, and uh, first definition says. Pascal service, which was a custom to be offered for the people's deliverance from old from Seleucia, for the people's deliverance of old from Egypt. Now that was the Passover, the Pascal lamb. The lamb uh, the Israelites were accustomed to slay and eat on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, the first month of the year, in memory of the day in which their fathers, preparing to depart from Egypt, were bitten by by God to slay and eat a lamb and to sprinkle their blood, to sprinkle their doorposts with his blood and the, and the destroying angel seeing the blood might pass over their dwellings. Christ crucified is likened to the slain of the Paschal lamb. Exactly. So from from what we see here, this word Easter here in the New Testament or in Acts chapter 12, verse four is really Passover. So let's get uh, what the traditions of the Passover were. This is going to be Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, and the, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. So that so we know that that's the beginning of the year. When the Passover comes, that's the beginning of the year. Speak 
ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, oh, and also, if you notice, Easter never comes at the beginning of uh, Esau's year. The beginning of Esau's year is in January, which is dead winter for some odd reason, you know. But so that lets you know that that has nothing to do with the scriptures right there. But uh, verse three, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying in the 10th day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. So you have sheep or goats. And ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood, take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house houses wherein they shall eat and they shall eat the flesh in the night roast of roast with fire and unleavened bread did not it say unleavened bread in a let's see Hold on. did not it say unleavened bread in Acts chapter 4 uh, chapter 12 Verse 3, Acts chapter 12, verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So that's talking about this Passover. And uh, verse 8. And they shall eat up, they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all, with water, but roast with fire, his head, his legs, with the with the puritanates thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain unto the morning, and that which remaineth of it unto the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat, with your loins girded, shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And check this out. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And the rest just kind of goes into, uh, you know, the, the rest of the, the month, what you're supposed to do the rest of those seven days. But but that's what. Uh, the Easter is supposed to be, according to the scriptures, the Passover. It's only mentioned once in Acts chapter 12, verse 4. It's only mentioned that one time in the scriptures, and it's talking about the Passover. Now, uh, so all those, uh, so like those pagan traditions and, and holidays and, and all that with Easter bunnies and eggs and and uh the death burial and the celebration of the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ has absolutely nothing to do with the scriptures let's see uh let's see This is uh, Amos chapter 5, verse 20. Let's see. I'll start at verse 20. 
Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. So the Most High not even, he, he hate when you celebrate Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving and Fourth of July and Memorial Day, all these all these holidays, most I hates those days. He despises that. He don't even care to hear you playing your songs, your, your songs and your music in the in the churches. None of that, because you are being we're being disobedient unto him. He didn't tell us to celebrate that stuff. Uh, matter of fact, we're gonna go with Jeremiah chapter ten, verse one. Hear ye the word of the Lord, speak unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. And that's what we did. We learned the ways of the heathen. We took on their customs and uh, their customs, their holidays, their feast days, all that. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. And that's exactly what people are. They When they see the... Uh, what they call shooting stars, people are amazed when they see these uh, blood moons and super moons and, and other planets in the skies and all that. They are literally uh, dismayed them. They are amazed at them. But we know them to be signs to know that our redemption draw, draw off nigh, the coming of uh, Yahweh is uh, near. That's what we look at those, look at those signs for. But Get out this, learn not to, don't learn the ways of the heathen. Don't go after those ways. So that pagan Easter, Easter holiday with your Easter dresses and your Easter speeches and your and your Sunday best and your Easter hats, all that, man, that, that has nothing to do whatsoever with the scriptures. So uh so put put that put that stuff off. You know, turn turn away from that. You know, turn back to the Lord, because everything we need to do is right here in the scriptures. So I uh, hope you were edified with that. Shalom.